Hello everybody and welcome back to Super Mario Galaxy. In the last episode we continued we continued exploring more galaxies and we unlocked the Freeze Flame Galaxy and got all the stars available to us there. So now let's move on to the next one. Dusty Dune Galaxy. Yep, the desert level. Every Mario game has one. Alright, soaring on the desert winds. I will admit, I've never really been a fan of desert levels in Mario games. And I'm still not. I mean, this galaxy is fun, but I don't really care for it too much. I mean, it's still really fun to play, but it's definitely not my favorite galaxy. And that's nothing against the level, I've just... I just... I just don't like desert levels. I just don't. Anyway, now that I've gotten that out, I will actually start talking more about the game. Alright, so these tornadoes. When you get in them, if you shake, if you spin, you will do this weird helicopter thing. I don't know how Mario's moving his arms around like that, but that's just what happens. And... If I ground pound here, it'll take me all the way to the bottom. Yes! I just love doing that, it's pretty cool. Yeah, the floor here, it's not quicksand, but it is like... moving sand? I guess? Uh, no, I want to get on top of the blocks. Okay, forget getting on top of the blocks. Yeah, the floor slows you down. Alright. I'm actually going to go on top of the swamp. Let me up here. Holy crap. Uh, don't get crushed by the ceiling. Yeah, if you go up here, there will be a one-up on top of this second swamp. And there's some stub -its. And a life mushroom. Always nice. Always good to have. Okay, this sand. This is quicksand. If you go in it, instant death. Kind of like the poison from Bubble Breeze Galaxy, essentially. It acts the same way. There's some switches underneath this swamp. All they do is just make star that's coming around these wheel things? Whatever they are. Oh yeah, there, there's also a one-up on top of that swamp. But I'm not going to get it. I have, I still have plenty of lives. I'm still recording from the previous episode. So I think I still have a ton of lives. Yeah, I got 22, so I don't really need any more right now. Alright, you grab... Oh. Come on. You got this. A fire flower appears. This makes getting through all these piranha plants a lot easier. Alright. Go up here. Watch out because there'll be a boulder. Yeah, if you just go real if you go as slow as you can and spin as soon as the boulder appears, you should spin right at the crystal and just go ahead and break it. Alright, we already made it to the end here. Get all those. Very good. And yeah, all this sand that you see around here, it is instant death, so be careful. These guys, I, I don't know what these, I don't know what they're called, but they're basically just flying chickens that poop out bombs. I'm not even kidding, that's what they do, they are pooping out bombs. You can be able to jump up to them, you can spin them like that. But the easier way is to just shoot a star bit into them to also stun. Like so. Get out of here. Yeah, I don't... Who came up with that enemy design? Just like, let's have a chicken flying around in the desert that poops out bombs. I mean, it literally poops out bombs. Getting up this freaking sand fall, sand fall can be ah. Uh, getting up this sand fall can be kind of annoying. 
There we go. Alright. Oh, and if you ever want to get out of this helicopter thing, you can also just ground pound. Although, I'm not going to do it here, because that will send me to my doom. But yeah, if you're ever above ground and you want to get out of the helicopter spin, just ground pound and you'll go straight down to the ground. Alright, lots of wall jumping here. Okay, give me here. Thank you. Uh, yes. Blocks will disappear when you touch them. And we have made it to the star. It is trapped inside a crystal. Now, whatever you do, do not fall off the edge here. It will take you back to the start of this planet. And I can only imagine how annoying that would be. It's never happened to me before, but I have seen other I have seen it happen to other people before and they got they got pretty upset. Cause getting up that tower is already a piece of work. Oh, a hungry Luma has appeared. That's good. But we won't be getting it to him until a bit later. Right. Something else I should mention about the Dusty Dune Galaxy. It is one of the largest galaxies in the game, having a lot of stars. Blasting through the sand. So yeah... I don't really like this level too much because it's the desert. I don't really like the desert levels and it's also one of the largest galaxies in the game. Ah, oh, come on. It is tied with the Battle Rock Galaxy for having the most missions in a single level, in a single world. So yeah, it's... It's big, and I don't like the theme. Alright. Moving on from me complaining, we got this Pokey here who's red for some reason. I mean, usually the Pokies are yellow and they're covered with spikes. I don't know why this one's red and has no spikes. But it is still a Pokey. Still a Pokey. Anything under here? Uh, nope. If I... What if I go into this one? There's a star? Yep. Rainbow star. I'm just gonna stand here and let them run into me. <laughs> I'm Superman! Anything that touches me gets harmed under this one. Oops, wrong way. There's a life mushroom under here. Alright. We. Hello, Dry Bones. Oh, is this the first time we've seen Dry Bones? I think it is, actually. Yeah, this is the first time we've seen Dry Bones in this game. But yeah, just like the other Mario games, spinning or jumping on him will just turn him into a pile of bones, and... he'll just come back. Like Dry Bones always does. That's just what Dry Bones do. I believe the only way you can actually destroy them is with is with the invincibility the rainbow star but yeah that's really about it when and kind of like the goombas when they see you they will start to chase you around and in high numbers they can be pretty annoying dry bones have always been a pretty annoying enemy to deal with mainly because you can't really kill them they always just come back I guess that's... But they are undead. Alright. Decisions. Both pathways will take you to the same place. But I like the color coordinated. Red and orange go together. So Mario's gonna take this pathway. Don't worry. If you take the green pathway, it'll take you to this same... It'll take you to the same place. It's just a slightly different route, that's all. Ugh. Oh. Sorry about that. Sorry about the yawn. 
right. Ah, uh, don't fall in the sand. These tornadoes with eyes. Ah, uh, no, no, don't fall in the sand. Oh, that the dry bones came in with me. He's like, I'll get you even if it kills me. Oh, I guess it is one way to get rid of the dry bones. Yeah, the, yeah, the quicksand gets rid of them. That's right. How can I forget that? Oh, so I guess you can kill the dry bones. If you lure them into the quicksand, that will that will get rid of them permanently. Huh, so there is a way to kill them. Alright, these these tornadoes with the eyes, I believe they are called twisters. Yeah, I think that's what they're called. I don't know if the tornadoes without the eyes, like just the regular tornadoes, have a different name or if they're also called twisters. I don't I have no idea. I do know that in the Super Mario 64, the there were some tornadoes in the desert level that looked like the ones in Mission 1, but and they were called Twisters, so I don't know if I don't know if the ones in this game are different. All right, these two Twisters, they can't actually hurt you. The rocks that they're spinning around can actually hurt you, so you want to be careful. But I hit that switch on top of that tower, and doing so, it basically pushed it through the planet and made it appear on this side. So now we can actually grab the star. Now you do have a time limit though, so you do want to make it there pretty quickly and if you don't, it'll just go back to the other side and you just gotta hit the switch again. Alright. I predict that a prankster comet's gonna show up. Oh, it didn't! Huh, usually when I play that, the prankster comet usually shows up after that. Alright, I was wrong. I was expecting it to, because that's what Free Swing did. Alright, Sun Baked Sandcastle. First things first, let's hit this switch. And there was a thing hidden inside all along. Yeah, this chicken guy being pretty annoying, but if you grab these star bits, you can just get rid of him instantly. Now he's no longer a print. Now he's no longer a pain. Alright, watch out for the blocks. If you are underneath them, you will I believe you will be crushed and instantly die. So be careful, watch where their shadows are. Yay. I'm stuck in the sand. Help me. Now nah, I'm okay. All right. Hitting this thing. Show us. There we go. This is gonna make this big freaking tower appear. Just how big? Well, it's still going up. <laughs> Hit that thing when it was going up. Yeah, and it also brings up more stupid dry bones. Get out of here. Alright, give me that shell. And of course if you don't if you don't grab this shell, of course you have the Koopa still on top. Yeah, this guy. Uh can I jump up here? There we go. All right, we need the shell for it. Go on this side where it's got like a middle position sticking out. Ah, didn't mean to do that. But luckily, this guy's up here. Go up here. To the chest. Be careful. It will when you hit the chest. It will actually push you off the ledge. But if you like spin, you should be able to just grab it. All right, if you hit that, if you hit that orange switch on the other side, it'll just lower the tower back down, but you don't have to, you can just easily go back to the top. Oops, why, why did I shoot? Get rid of this thing. Very quick. Let's see what else is on. Hello, crab. Have you seen the crabs before? 
I don't think we've seen these guys before. They're pretty, they're pretty funny. Normally when they see you, the red ones will actually try to attack you. The green ones, though, will usually run away from you. They can still hurt you though if you touch them, so watch out. What you gotta do, they have a hard shell on their front, so you have to hit them in their butts. And that will kill them. The red ones will just give you a few star bits, the green ones will give you a one-up though. Which is probably why they're running away from you. Oh look, a pokey! One of only two pokies in the entire game. I don't know why the pokies are so rare in this game. But, but I, I like this part. You go down here, hit this, and it flings it to the other planet. I said it flings it to the other planet. There we go. I like that a lot. I, thought that was pretty, I always thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, this pokey. This is only one of two pokies in the entire game. The other pokey... Aww. I think I got two coconuts, come on. The other Pokey we saw like near the beginning of the game in Good Egg Galaxy. But yeah, beat him the same as before, hit him with a coconut, and then destroy his head. There we go. Ah, there's the star! Gimme! Gimme! Why won't you get me? Alright, whatever. I'll play the game. I'll play your game, game. First, I'm gonna run around collecting all these bits. The star bits. Alright. Break open the pipe. I mean, break open the box, there's a pipe. Although, unfortunately, you are not able to return. Oh well. Let's go get the star. Uh oh. The planet appears to be falling through the castle. Yeah, so now I got. I would say ceiling, but you're standing upside. You're standing on the top side, so I guess this would technically be the floor. So yeah, basically you got the thing just con consistently rising, constantly rising, and if it does push you against the ceiling, you will get crushed. Now as a kid, I used to do absolutely terrible with this star, but now I can do it with no problems at all. In fact, we're already here at the end, and it won't go past this point. It'll stop right here. So it won't fill up the same room with the star, don't worry. But as a kid, whenever I played that mission, I would fail every single time I played it. I was absolutely terrible at it. I couldn't beat it for the life of me. Alright. We're done with that. Oh, a new chapter's been added to the storybook. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Trying to debate whether I should get more stars first or get do the storybook. Let's do the storybook first. Let us begin. Chapter seven: The Telescope. After seeing their 100th comet, a sudden thought popped into the girl's head. I wonder if my home planet is still as blue as it was. That's when she remembered her father's telescope. Peeking into the telescope, a tiny blue dot floated into sight. It was smaller than a star bit. How strange. It's so far away, but it feels so close. She twisted the knob of the telescope and the blue dot grew until she could make out, a, make out a grassy hill dotted with flowers. It seemed very familiar to her. Zooming in even closer, a terrace on the hill came into view. I used to go stargazing there when I lived on my home planet. 
She remembered rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up that hill to look at the stars. She remembered how she and her brother would sled down that hill. She remembered having picnics with her mother on that hill on bright and windy days. And... I want to go home. I want to go home right now. The girl burst into tears and the Loomis didn't know what to do. I want to go home. I want to go back to my house by the hill. I want to see my mother. The girl was shouting now, her face wet with tears. But I know she's not there. I knew all along that she wasn't out there in the sky because... because... She's sleeping under the tree on the hill. The girl's cries echoed through the stars and a hush fell over the area. That should do it for today. Well, that got very depressing and sad. Yeah, that, that is very sad. Yeah, that... Yeah... Man, that, that is just really sad. The change in music and learning that her mother passed away and was buried under under that tree, that that's just heartbreaking. Alright. Moving on from the sad, depressing story, let's get back into the really fun adventure. Ooh, two hidden stars. Let, let's go for this one. And from the green question mark, you probably safely presume that this is another green star. And the last one, because there's only three of them. Yes. All right, back to this mission. Yeah, here, Pokey Sprout. All right. I like to just stand here in the middle where the coin was and give him all at once. Alright, this guy. The way I showed him before is to just individually pick off each segment. By the way, if you stand close to him. You gonna do it? There he goes. He will actually try to attack you. An easier way to beat him is just... Uh, okay. I didn't expect him to go back under the ground. Easier way to beat him. Just jump on his head. And then he's instantly gone. It can be a little bit harder at the time because he he does move around a good bit. But yeah, that's just a quicker way of beating him. Go around this side. There's a hungry Luma here. Hello, friend. How many star it? Uh, how many star? What the heck is hap? I'm s why am I sliding? Okay. All right. Yeah, I got you, Starvitz. How many do you need? Only needs 20. Very small number. Alright. Transform! A new planet was born. And it's a pyramid that looks just like all the other ones you see in the background. Lies straight into the pipe. Okay. And we have a Silver Star mission. Have not had one of these for a pretty long time. In fact, I think the only one we've had was, was the one in Space Junk Galaxy. And of course it's and of course the Prankster Comet version. Yeah, I think that's it. I've not had a yeah, I've not had a Silver Star mission for a while. But yeah, same as before. Get, up, get all five of them to make the star appear. For the way that this planet works, as you can see, when you touch the green stripes, the sand will start to move. The sand floor and the ceiling will start to move. And be careful because, again, you can still be crushed by this and instantly get killed. 
But this is how you explore. Explore this planet. And it'd be kind of tedious because it's kind of slow. Stay here, stay here, stay here. Do not die, do not die. Change. Change. There we go. Last one should be right around here. No, that's a box. Should be... Ah, oh, that's a ceiling. I don't want to get crushed. There it is. Got them all. The sand now disappears. And we have the third green star. Quick way to get there. You can backflip on the walls. Uh, hold on. Specifically, backflip on on this wall right here. Uh, I said. I said backflip on here, and we'll be able to just walk across the barrier. There we go. We've gotten the third and final green star. Let's see what we can learn from the green lumas now. Yeah. Treasure of the Pyramid. Ah. You've managed to recover all of the green power stars and restore the green launch star. And we've unlocked three new galaxies. Even I don't know what's waiting for you out there beyond the green launch star. Alright, I think that's going to be a good place to end the episode, but before I do that, let's go talk to the green lumas and see what they want to know, and see what they're going to tell us. Actually, I want to talk to the green toad first, he might say something different now. The lumas are going to lead you to the hidden trial galaxies, but we can't go out there with the starshroom. You'll have to carry on without us, Mario. Alright then. You say anything different? No, you say something different before, okay. You may try three types of trials. If you truly are the one who can save the universe, you will pass them all. The trial galaxies merely reflect your own abilities. You may find great joy or great disappointment. That's basically the game's way of saying, if you're good at this game, you'll like these galaxies. But if you suck at these games, you'll hate these galaxies. The doorway to the trial galaxies has been restored. May the light of the cosmos be with you, brave, tra brave challenger. Let's see what's up here real quick. I'm not actually going to do these galaxies yet, but I just want to show this little planet off. If you talk to these Lumas, they will take you to the trial galaxies, one for each. And if you want to go back to the observatory, if you change your mind, just take this pipe. And it'll be back here, no problem. Yeah, I won't be doing these galaxies for a while. I usually like to save them to the end because they're some of the they are some of the tougher galaxies out there, and they're meant to be they're sort of kind of meant to be just like final trials, essentially. So I just kind of like to leave them like that. But anyway, we made a lot of progress. We explored part of the Dusty Dunes galaxy. A dusty Dune Galaxy, it's not Dunes. And got another chapter of the storybook where it took a very sad turn at the end. Hopefully we'll see a brighter future in the book. And in the next episode, we'll go back to the Dusty Dune Galaxy and most likely finish off the Bedroom Dome. Alright, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.